Hey, so welcome to Gruff Garage. Um, this might be the first video I put on my channel, if I even make a video out of this. Um, so I guess, long story short, Gruff Garage. It is me, my fiance, got a bunch of friends, starting to get into autocross, want to do big track stuff. Um, we've got this piece of trap, 82E21. Um, it's actually kind of fun to car, it's got a, fun to drive. It's got a 5 speed manual in it, just a little M10 4 banger engine. Um, this we're planning on bringing out for ice racing, rally cross, it's just we gotta get it running just right first. And uh, right now we have a new vacuum advanced diaphragm for the distributor on the way. Um, we had a lot of fueling issues with this when we picked it up, but we got it dirt cheap, not running, um, after a little TLC and throwing tools, uh, it's working again. Um, so yeah, that'll be fun. And then that's the permanent project. Anyone that knows me in person knows that that has been here way too long. Um, that is my 2004 Mazda RX-8. It's been six years. I picked it up with a blown engine, not knowing anything about it. And now I'm at this point where I'm currently working on rebuilding the engine. Um, just had the subframe powder coated, everything's painted, new motor mounts, uh, big old Megan Racing radiator, big fat guy, um, Flexolite fans, I think they move 3000 CFMs of air uh, together. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to learn wiring and stuff. I just, I want to do it myself. It's kind of having that pride. I get under it. Um, so there's the suspension. You can't really see. Uh, phase two motor trend upper control arms, stock sway bar. It's on Megan drop springs, which eventually I'll switch out. Everything's powder coated, new lower control arms. Um, stainless steel braided brake lines. I went through and rebuilt the electric power steering rack. Well, not really rebuilt. I had to clean it up. The, the contacts were super dirty from the brushes. It made an awful squealing noise anytime you tried to move it. Um, I don't know if the camera will adjust, but there's the stainless steel braided lines. Um, but all new hardware. Uh, brakes are powder coated. I mean, that same color, it's like a copper rose glitz. Um, right now, working on the rear end braking system and the engine. Just spend heck of a time with this car. I just wish I had more time and money to stick into it, but we'll see where we get. So, for right now, working on cutting side seals a little bit. That takes forever. Anyone that's done this, it it's a long, painstaking process, but you got to do it right. Um, so yeah, I've been fiddling with that. It takes me like 40 minutes as of right now to cut one. I have this little jig set up. I have a junk rotor um, to set it up with this drill press. It's not lined up right now, but you just lower it down. And you lock it in and then you can just take your side seal and press it up against the sanding bit and you just cut it down and it leaves a nice angle so then once this guy is in here um, this side seal will butt up let me get my hand out of the way the side seal will butt up really nice up against it so without further ado Let's do that. So, fun thing. I don't know if it'll adjust, but there's a little beveled edge right around here. 
That top part, you can see it's got a little bevel to it. On the opposite side, it's sharp. It's machined flat on this face, so it leaves you with a sharp edge all around. The key is that sharp edge has to be pointing out. Um, <laughs> I don't know where I found that information, but it was information that at one point I was seeking for days on end because I didn't even know how to set this up. So, pop our springs in for this side and hopefully get to cotton. Alright, so, this camera's not going to pick it up with really crap. Um, I have it sanded, but it came out to like a real fine point. Um, I don't I don't like how this one turned out. Luckily, I have some leeway. I should be able to still salvage this. I'm going for um, 5 thou of uh, gap, basically. It'll butt up against this seal, and then you should have, oh, where is it? You should be able to slide this guy in there at a feeler gauge. And it's five thousandths of an inch. So that way, as the engine heats up and it expands, it will have room to grow instead of what I've seen uh, previously in I. Uh, Got an engine from a guy that was rebuilding them. Um, he must have done no gap because it would actually... The pressure against these two sides would snap the metal... Here. Right in this section. So this entire outer piece of your corner seal would... Wow, I did not have the camera focused. So it would snap right there in the center this entire outer ring of the corner seal basically became two pieces and you don't want that because then that the center piece is then no longer really held in by anything they fall out they get lodged into places um, generally uh, rule of thumb is not to have loose metal bits in your engine so we're going to try to avoid that, see how well we do. Um, I think I'm going to keep this video real short. Uh, this is kind of an introductory, because um, there's really nothing interesting going on with cutting these seals. But um, my cousin got me, kind of lit a fire under my butt to start doing this, because I've been wanting to for a while. Um, so check out his channel, Paul's Project Garage. We'll probably end up collaborating at some point soon um because he's way more into cars than me it's pretty cool he's got a pretty sweet oldsmobile that he's swapping an ls into pretty far along with the project it's gonna be rowdy so um yeah keep an eye out uh let us let me know if you want to see more 
autocross videos or just kind of talking to myself in the shop with my phone. It feels very awkward. Um, or just, you know, seeing us wrench on this old 82. It's got... Um, this is the Bosch K-Jet constant injection system, so it's mechanical injection. I'm going to pop the hood. Uh, as I said before, it had a lot of fueling issues. <clears throat> it was really fun to figure out. We hopefully have it solved. We're shooting around 5 bar of pressure into the fuel distribution block now. Um, so the car's a total heat. And then you pop the hood, and you got the nice cables, new old stock radiator, new Optima battery, new Bosch starter that's down in there. It's got headers on it. Yeah, I know. Um, so anyways, yeah, there's a fuel distribution block right here. We're getting, like, no pressure up to here. As soon as we would disconnect the fuel pump, uh, all the pressure would leak back towards the tank. So it was just awful to try to start it hot or cold. It it just fought every step of the way. Um, but yeah, I we've got it now. Got to get the exhaust on it. Um, my fiance is throwing seats in it. Uh, we got some Brom, beautiful blue Brom racing seats. Poser Thrones. They're not FIA certified or anything, but Brom. Um, so yeah, this'll, this'll definitely end up on the channel. Like I said, we're just planning on thrashing it around on the ice, ice racing, rally cross. Robin wants to do autocross, my fiance. So she's going to learn on this thing because she doesn't want to chance breaking my daily. I do it all the time. It's no sweat. She doesn't know that. <laughs> um, she does actually. Uh, so You'll get to see her putting around in this. It makes like three horsepower, so that's super cool. It'll be a fun car. It's rear-wheel drive, five-speed. It's a blast. So, yeah, it's just a, it's a wannabe German Miata. Like, pre-Z4s. I just thought of that. All right, well, see you guys on the other side. And let me know what you want. Peace.